Hello, Gaz Williams here, and today I thought I'd look at the new update that's just come out for the Arturia Keystep uh, version 1.1. The Arturia Keystep is a um, it's a really affordable controller keyboard, and it's very functional uh, because it's got MIDI, CV, and gate, and USB, and you can use all of those at the same time. It also has two modes. It has a sequencer mode and an ARP mode, and both of those have gained some new functionality with this 1.1 update. Okay, so uh, the ARP, ARP, I won't delve too much in the ARP, but um, basically the ARP gives you um, some new random modes. It gives you uh, like a pattern mode or a Brownian motion mode. I haven't really explored them very much at the moment, but um, maybe if you do <laughs> mention in the comments, because I'm not quite sure what the Brownian motion one does uh, or the pattern one come to that, but I'm sure it's cool. But <laughs> the arpeggio also allows you to add notes in different octaves by just changing those octave buttons. But we are going to focus on the sequencer mode because that's what I really like using this particular keyboard for. And the sequencer mode uh, has just gained a really, really powerful function, which is the ability to kind of create a blank pattern first. You could have done it in the past, but it was a bit of a pain in the bum. The way you'd have done it in the past is go into the sort of step edit, and then you'd have to go, if I was gonna add, um, say I was gonna create a 16 step sequence, I'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 to do that. But now there's a much quicker way of doing it, and that's by holding the record button down and then using the numbers, which are the keyboard MIDI numbers that you'd normally change the MIDI channel with the shift button. But now if you hold the record button down, then the one to six, 16 allows you to go, you know, I can set it to one, just a single step or to 16 steps. But cleverly, if I was to hit 16 again, I would make it 32 step, you know, or 48 or 64 steps by just sort of repeating. Or you can create any combination of that. I could go um, 16 and one and make a 17 step uh, sequence. So it's pretty cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little 16 step sequence. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hold down here. I'm going to press 16 and release. And now I've actually created a blank 16 step sequence. If I had a drum machine, that would have been, probably made a lot more sense. But um, anyway, so let's just add some notes in just randomly. key step is a polyphonic step sequencer, so I can go. Now, what's cool is I can change the sequencer length on the fly now. So if I hold down this and go to one, when I release record, then it'll just start playing just the first step. Now, I'm going to go to four steps. When I release, 12 steps. Back to the 16 steps. One step. steps, one step, four steps, so back to 16 steps, two, three, four, <clears throat> so that kind of makes the sequencer so much more useful and, uh, and fun, I mean it's already a really great fun sequencer, but now to be able to do that kind of thing just uh, expands it quite considerably. There's a cool little feature that you might have missed, actually. It's been in it from the beginning, but I thought I might include it here anyway, and that's um, using shift to prevent any changes uh, happening uh, until you release shift. So for instance, if I was gonna change sequences and I wanted to go from sequence five, and I wanted to go to sequence eight, whatever sequence I go to, if I have to pass through the other ones. But if I hold down shift, the moment I release shift, it brings in a new change. Change the time division. I'm gonna to go to a quarter division. I'm gonna 
go back to 16. So it's kind of cool. It means that those settings will only take place once you release shift. So that kind of gives another performance element to the key step. The key step really is about performance and being able to manipulate that performance in real time. I think Arturia have done a good job here because it's been out a few years and from to bring out this additional functionality. And again, it's a, it's a free upgrade. I think it's pretty cool. And it makes the key step, which is already a bit of a bargain. Generally, you can get it for less than hundred pounds here in the UK. Oh, I think it's list price of 119 euros, but shop around, you'll get it cheaper than that. And it's a decent little keyboard. It's got 32 keys as opposed to the 25 keys that you generally see on these smaller ones. The keys are a little bit bigger than your mini keys. And they've also got aftertouch, which is cool. And another little thing I should mention is out the back here our cv controls we've got um like a cv and gate so we can send you know note uh, on and off and what note it is how long the notes are held on for and out of the mod um it can either take its information from this mod wheel or in the software the uh, midi control center that you get um that you install in your computer you can choose to set aftertouch out of that control as well so that's pretty awesome there's a bunch of cool little features in this and i do recommend having a good nose around the uh, the midi control center because there is a lot of configurable features within the software too Okay, that'll do for now. Just a quick little video showing the Arturia key step and some of the groovy new features. I've only just downloaded it myself, so I need to explore it more. <laughs> but I thought I'd just share what I've learned so far. Um, I've been Gaz Williams. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you next time. Cheerio.